You want to look up at the people? <laughs> well, come on. They would like to see your pretty face. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Deb's Way. I'm Deb, and this is Ginger. She's a little Pomeranian. She doesn't like to be... She thinks I'm going to groom her, put it this way, so she's not too comfortable right now. <laughs> she's been brushed a little bit. She's been trimmed up a little bit. I need to tweak her. Definitely need to trim her toenails, but that's another subject. That will be tomorrow. But I thought I'd show you. This is the little ginger that, I tell you, when I come back into my sewing nook, and if William is sitting in the family room watching TV, she will bark her head off to get me out there. It's almost like she thinks that if William's in the family room, I need to be out there with him too. She doesn't like us separated, like me in the sewing nook area and him out there. So she barks to get my attention and she gets into a little trouble for it. Not much, you know, she's spoiled rotten. Well, can you imagine? She's just a little thing. She's about five pounds actually. And she'll be fifth. What? Where are you going? Where are you going? She'll be 15 years old in November. Yeah, that's our little girl. Let me get her out of here now. She ran out of here when she got down on the floor. She doesn't like being back in my sewing room. But that's her choice. Okay. Anyway, before I go any further, I would like to thank Jen for hosting this collaboration, starting this collaboration, uh, Friday Sews, I have become, you know, online friends with several people through their videos. I've learned a lot. I've seen a lot of things that I would love to make. I've seen a lot of things that I admire and probably, well, it'll probably be quite some time before I would be able to achieve, you know, <laughs> that sort of thing. But I, I've just been amazed by a lot of the makes that I've seen and I've just had fun. I've had a lot of fun here on this this uh, collaboration. I And also I want to thank everybody that is part of this collaboration whose channels, whose videos I have gone and watched and commented on and I've asked questions of several people and they've been kind enough to answer me. I, I feel like I'm a newbie, you know, uh, but I'm a, a re-learner I mean, I have not sewn clothes for many years, and I have not really felt like I was uh, skilled enough to make a piece of clothing that I would wear out in public, okay? Yeah. So I want to get to that point. I would like to make something, anything, a, a dress or whatever that I would feel comfortable wearing out in public, and I think, well, anyway, I'm going to strive at coming to that point at this time in my life, okay? And I feel like I've, I'm on the road to doing that. So I'm pleased with everything that I've seen and I've learned so far. So thank you, Jen, for, like I said, starting this collaboration that got me inspired all over again to sew clothing. And I also wanna thank Trish at Pinky's Farm for encouraging me to become a part of this collaboration. Even though, like I told her, I said, I, you guys are professional sewists so compared to me. and. She said, you, you don't even have to sew to belong, you know, to, you can knit, work on a craft or whatever. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased. I'm very glad that I did join you when I did. And it has motivated me to move on. Okay. There are many channels yet that I need to visit and I'll get around to you too. There are quite a few channels involved in this collaboration. I've only touched on, I don't even know, maybe a couple dozen, if that. It, it takes time. <laughs> but I'll get there. Now, what have I been up to in my sewing nook? Well, as you can see, my machine is all covered up. It's kind of resting for the weekend here. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've been busy though, the last few days especially. Remember about a week ago, I showed you my haul from Goodwill where I went in search of sheets, just like when Trish and Michelle and Jen go out shopping at the thrift stores in their area and they find beautiful floral sheets that they make dresses out of. I did find some sheets, not quite as pretty as some of the ones that they found, 
but I did find a very nice, it was a 50-50, 50 cotton, 50 polyester. I like the poly cotton mix. I always have, maybe because you can just wash and go with that. You don't really have to iron it. But I found a, a poly cotton sh uh, sheet that had a ruffle on the edge of it, and it was pink striped on a white background. And I right away thought that would make a nice little summer dress, and that's exactly what I did with it. But I had a dilemma deciding, did I want to use that ruffle or not? In the very beginning, even when I first got the sheet, I thought, I'm going to put that ruffle to use along the hemline. And I still thought about doing that until just this morning, and I, it's like I went back and forth, back and forth. Should I put it there? Should I use it on the sleeve area? Should I even use it at all? And, and really, William kind of made up my mind not to use it this time. He just said, no, it's just it's to be just a, a, a plain and simple summer dress to wear around the house. You don't need to dress it up too much. It's, it's like on the first dress that I made, I put buttons. In the end, I did sew some buttons on that top of the shoulder area here. And I wore it that way for a few days, and then I decided I, I didn't like it. So I removed the buttons. I like it much better. And the same with this one. I told him maybe I should put buttons on the pocket, you know, dress it up a little bit. But it doesn't really need to be dressed up that much. It's a house dress. So I'm going to leave it as it is. Along the hem area, I did kind of use a little decorative stitch. Um, just trying one of my decorative stitches on the machine itself. And made a nice little trim you know, a little stitch area along the hemline. I'll sh try and show you that. It's pink thread, so it blends in very, very well. And anyway, let me show you the dress I finished. So this is my latest little dress. Well, it's not little, but anyway, this is my dress. With pockets. And I'm gonna try and get closer here and show you the hemline. Because that's where I did the decorative stitch. And I mean, it's nothing that I put it in a an embroidery hoop for or anything like that. We'll see here if you can see the stitching that I did there. It's just a little decorative stitch along the hem. Now I did talk about um, possibly making some slippers. I didn't start them, no. But I dug out supplies in order to get them started. What I'm going to be making is, I don't know how well you're going to see this because it was a printout that I did. Hopefully you can see that. Um, they're called Midnight Slippers by Stitch Upon a Time. And I first saw this actually on Adam Sews, where he made a pair of them and he did a tutorial. And I watched the tutorial and I thought, I should be able to do those. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see. I will be watching that tutorial again because after I printed off the instructions and everything, I thought, this looks more complicated than I thought. So I will definitely be looking at the tutorial video again that Adam did. Thank you, Adam, for that. So. Those slippers are what I will be working on throughout the next week. I did go through my little stash. I don't have much of a fabric stash anymore. I got rid of a lot of it during the pandemic, the start of the pandemic, when I decided that I was going to turn my sewing room into a storage area, food storage, like a pantry area. So I had a shelving unit full, I mean jam-packed with fabric, and I either sold a bunch of that, like in bundles even, or gave it away. And I did keep some that I figured I would be using, making short sets or, you know, maybe little house dresses, that type of thing, just things that I knew that I would use, and also some quilting material. I, I sold a lot of material, though, <laughs> I really, really did, and some of it had been with me for several years. But, um, and I also sold a machine that I never really learned how to sew on. It was a beautiful machine. I bought it brand new, but it was getting to be quite old. It was a, a designer one. 
And yeah, I bought it when it was brand new, but just before the Designer 2 came out. So anyway, it still worked wonderful. It had very, very few sewing hours on it. I knew that for a fact because I had a technician look at it and he also was somebody who was involved with Husqvarna or Viking machines. And he looked at it and he told me he couldn't believe how many hours it showed for embroidery and for sewing. So it was like a brand new machine. The last thing I had done to that, well, I really am digressing here, but I'll finish up real soon. But the last thing I had fixed on that was, well, just to having it maintained and tuned up. And then the bobbin, the bobbin needed a new piece or part to it. And he had trouble finding that part. So I figured, hmm, my machine was maybe becoming a little bit obsolete and maybe I needed to upgrade to a new one. Or maybe I didn't even need one because I have a little portable Viking machine that I can use yet. So I sold my designer one at the beginning of the pandemic. And I think it, I, I really feel confident that I went to a good home and to somebody that was going to use it to its full, you know, possibility. I, I never did. I really never did. But what, a year or so later, I went and bought my brother machine. And I love it. It is just enough for me here. I feel like I should be a rep for brother in a way, but it it has just enough stitches for me, just enough built in here, more than I will probably ever use. It, and it's a good machine for quilting, for clothes sewing, whatever. But anyway, I digress. Let me get back on subject here. I was talking about the slippers. I went through what stash I did have in the closet and I came up with, well, it says you have to have the fabric. This fabric, it has, I always looked at it as being little corn candies all over it. I don't know if you can really see what it is. But it's a very pretty, like, hunter green, blues and browns. And then I found this uh, fleecy piece of material. And to me, those look like you know, candy hearts that you get at Valentine's time of year. <laughs> so I figured that would be my fleece lining. And I have all the rest of the material, so this is going to be my first pair of slippers. And I do wear slippers a lot down here. I really do. We have tile flooring, either tile or a wooden floor throughout the house, and it gets pretty chilly, you know, all times of the year. So I'm always wearing either those, you know, fleece footies or a slipper of some sort. I'm looking forward to giving the slipper a try. So that's going to be my next little project. And after that, I don't know. I just take it one project at a time. But other than that, not too much has taken place this week. And the rest of this weekend is just going to be quiet at home. So maybe tomorrow those slippers might be calling my name. But first, I gotta watch the tutorial. I hope you're all having a good one out there. You take care, and I'll be talking to you again real soon. But for this time around, it's gonna be bye for now.